love talking to you. Thank you. No, oh, really, it's I quite do. mutual. Ah, it's fun that we're doing this again. So, where's your juice? I mean, I I know where my juice is, but where's yours? Oh wow, my my juice is in whatever presents itself to be explored. Okay. Yeah. Well, can we go over the Succession 7 and the Sanctification 7? Can we cover what we know to be true? Or is that going to re- is that going to require referencing lots of notes or I mean not lots of notes, but maybe some notes. We'll okay. have to see. Why don't you want to cover it and then I'll fill in aspects that I feel maybe you're missing? How's that? Would that be a good idea? Like if you covered the, did the succession seven do we start from succession seven uh, you know because sanctification is one that has the preparation right or mm-hmm. does the preparation go i don't know what do you think i mean what what's like most juiced for me right now is like the the sanctification seven okay so let's hit that let's hit that let's let's do okay let's do because like within the succession seven that is the the area that mm-hmm. can be most challenging, it you know, like a sticking point. For a lot of people. Right. And right. it starts right away with the term. Some people have an issue with the terminology, mm-hmm. feeling that there's a neuro association between that and con- conventional religion. Mm-hmm. The only time they hear the word sanctification is, is in religious kind of context. Mm-hmm. And now here we've taken it out of the religious context, or at least that is exclusively used and using it, you know, in commerce you know, right. outside of religion and like okay what could that be perhaps like a high level of acceptance mm-hmm. right exactly yeah. but 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 with anointing i right. mean so high that you're anointing it like you're right. whatever that word would want to be sanctifying it you right. know you're just giving it, it you're raising it up what, mm. what is it exalting right you're exalting it you're you're bringing mm-hmm. it to its rightful place which right. is high because it's a holy moment for it is. for whatever whatever reason. That's beautiful. Yeah. So what do you know of the Sanctification 7? Go ahead. All right. It. So the Sanctification 7. Well, what we've established most recently is that there needs to be even preparation for the unconditional welcoming. And the, the preparation would be to access... The five tenets, right? How are you doing? Do you think you have that in you? Is that I, this I is think like a I can try. I know. Running. This I is know. Great. Oh my gosh! So the first is life is intelligent. Beautiful. Okay, number two, all feedback is perfect, given the sets of circumstances that preceded them. Wow, that's beautiful. All, right. all feedback is perfect, given the sets of circumstances that preceded them. Yes, I love that. I love that. And that, I guess I'm expounding, is, you know, again, that that whole piece that everything happens for a reason, which is what we've used in catalyst concepts. But I think this is more specific. You know, it's like it's it's letting you know that not only does it have a reason, but, you know, the feedback is the reason. Mm -hmm. You know, the feedback is integrous. We call it, you know, feedback integrity. Right. Mm -hmm. And so that covers it there. Number two. So what's number three? Number three. The determination of whether something is good or bad is based on how you see it. Wow. That is awesome. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of power. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine that we have that power? It's being proved to me, you know, on a daily basis when I'm willing to go there. Right. That's good. Yeah. And spot myself. That's beautiful. In terms of like what could be a knee jerk reaction. And it's like, okay step away observe this and you have a choice here you're Mm. at a choice point do you choose to see this as as bad with its natural ripple yeah natural consequences from that or do you choose to see it as good even if you can't know what the the good in the situation is at the the moment yeah exactly yeah up until now right right and number four number four the most effective form of spotting is non-personalized. That's beautiful. And that's the one we just basically unpacked the mm-hmm. other day in our last video. So mm-hmm. that was nice. So Yes. And number five, which we love, the second sentence. Yes, yes. 
The wisdom source is always available. Swirl will help you access it. So let's cover some of these that people who are watching this go, mm. what a crazy cult is this? What's mm. all of this languaging and wording? And I don't understand any of this. What's swirl? Right. It's like, it's, it's like shorthand. Right. That, Right. right, you're getting right down to the yeah. right. What is swirl? Explain Gosh. that to the un, right. un uneducated. Right, and 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 swirl is like is like flow. It's like it's it's almost like a feeling of of possibility of of accuracy of of rightness of of spirit. It's it's all that. Mm -hmm. And and it's it's such a a beautiful delimiter in terms of like okay here's this opportunity or situation that's that's prov uh, uh, presented, uh, itself. presented itself and okay I could do this or I could do that A or B and okay where is the most swirl mm -hmm. okay and and that gives tremendous direction right. People might think of it as breath, like where's mm, the most yes. breath, spaciousness, mm -hmm. you know, or if you are using moving away language, which most people love, mm -hmm. it's lacking in the heaviness or right. the density. Sometimes you can feel like certain dogmas are heavy mm -hmm. and you can even hold a position no matter how true it is dogmatically where it becomes at that point, not so swirlful. It becomes mm -hmm. dense. You know, we can see that in concepts, you know, that's where all of a sudden we can become self-righteous or arrogant you know, within a truth. And so that makes the truth less truthful mm -hmm. just in the way it's being presented, you know? So swirlful lets you present something in its highest light possible. So if it really mm -hmm. is true, you know, at least you're not sabotaging it by having it more dense or being arrogant with it or self-righteous with it, so. Mm -hmm. And what occurs to me too is, is something that you've said um, more recently, which is like, you know, is this... Um, swirl or is this swirl within a recursion right right and so there's like a, a mindfulness that needs to be checked in around okay is this just me running my own um treadmill in terms of oh yeah this is like feels good this feels like yeah comfortable for me this is like the swirl within a recursion yeah, exactly right versus the swirl which has you outside of the recursion right. and liberated from that right yeah but i think that's the ultimate game I just did an interview with Dr. Michael Labatinozzi, and we talked mm. pretty decently about, you know, the uh, the what I'm calling a phenomena around how people process recursively. Mm. So even if you were to give quote unquote a new stimuli, which is true, it's new for them, it's going to be revealed how they process to that new stimuli repeat that stimuli mm. and they process the same way you know it's just not been done so how mm. do we get people to process in new ways wow. and we're talking about the importance of archetypes again mm -hmm. and, the, and the, the, you know and and seeing through new eyes from new perspectives mm -hmm. and and that's really the key and why i spend so much energy and time and playing with archetypes and mantras and mm -hmm. brain states and all of these things because mm -hmm. it gives us an opportunity to process in newer exciting ways mm -hmm. So, yes, it's powerful. It's very powerful. It's fun, you know. So that takes care of the preparation, which is the zero part of the right. Oh my gosh, seven. I felt so complete. I know it was pretty complete. Whoa! All so right. So what comes in at number one? Number one is unconditional welcoming. <sighs> yes, and it's like a it's a, a preparation state for being prepared for whatever life brings. Right, right. So let me go back to what's really important here because when you throw out the word preparation, mm. you, it, it, it makes me feel like that's what we did the five tenets about. Right. And that that would help you be prepared, be in the right mindset for unconditional right. welcoming, which is right. really important because mm -hmm. if you're not really prepared, if you're not set, say for instance, mm. if you're going, okay, I'm going to unconditionally welcome anything, mm -hmm. then something comes, even that you might in the past perceive it as bad because you're wired up and you're like hyper aware, mm. you can call it whatever you want, or you're mm -hmm. intentional, you're mindful to unconditionally welcome it, mm. you'll unconditionally welcome it. Mm -hmm. And those tenants will help you 
mm-hmm. organically, unconditionally welcome right. whatever's coming. See, and that's very important because mm-hmm. we're so at the mercy of number one of unconditional welcoming. And what ends up mm-hmm. happening is we're not thinking about unconditional welcoming when something pops up. And so a recursion takes it. Hi, Jack. You know, a recursive version of us that doesn't see it organically, mm-hmm. reactively as good or they're not at a place to quote unquote welcome it. They first have to curse it before they could even think about sanctifying it mm-hmm. or seeing it as useful or having integrity, right? right? So it's very important to really focus on those five tenets. As preparation. As preparation, right. right. And then constantly remind mm. yourself, you know, through those five tenets mm-hmm. that, okay, I'm going to unconditionally welcome whatever mm. shows up. And then people have a tendency of going, well, F that. I'm not going to show up unconditionally welcome something that I don't want as if that's the threat, right? Mm. Like if I welcome it, I'm going to sanctify its continuation or I'm going to invite its continuation Mm. or something to that effect. You Mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? And say no effing way am I going to invite something so negative or allow it or accept it as, you know, admissible Mm -hmm. as like, no, that's no, I'm not going to welcome that. That's ridiculous. I'm going to reject that. You know, be gone, Satan, you know, instead of like, oh, Satan, it's you. What's up, dude? Why are you here? <laughs> you know, seriously. And that's what I'm saying. So that adversarial. What can you teach me? What can you, you're obviously here to teach me something. Mm. What? That, like, like, like what? That God sucks? What is it? Mm. You know, think about it just in real classic right. archetypical messages. What? That, that there is no such thing as order, mm. that it's all chaos, that you're running the entire show, you know, and that everything is meaningless and that the only meaning that we could possibly give are the ones that our minds make up, you know, mm. fabricating. And then we hide behind these truths as if they are truth. And what we're really doing is deluding ourselves mm. of the fact that the real truth is everything is purposeless and meaningless. Is that what you mean, devil? Right. And so, you know, and to entertain that conversation without it being a threat. Mm. And then, you know, I would go, okay, if I were to agree that everything is Mm. meaningless, would you agree that that understanding is like putting your hand on a hot stove? Like, I don't like the phenomena that continues by doing that. So, yes, it's true. That stove does burn. It doesn't mean I have to touch it. So if I say these truths are real, that doesn't mean I have to participate in it because I watch people who participate mm. in things, whether it's agnostics or atheists, and they don't look so friggin' happy. You know, mm. they seem like they're fighting a fight. They, you know, they seem like they're more on a soapbox about the mm. non-existence of God than the people that they're criticizing who are overly ange- evangelical, you know? Mm. you know? That's what I see. I see a religion within the, the atheist community. You know, it's almost like we agree, right? There, you don't even use the word God. Oh, God. You know, it's like, oh, but Christians can't do that about Satan. <laughs> but you can make God Satan. God. Ah, you know, you know, denounce God. Goodbye, God. Goodbye, Satan. You know, and it's really it's you don't realize how it's the same. And it's like, no, it's not the same. It's like, no, OK, I'll, I'll see it your way. You're right. It's not the same. <laughs> So, boy, we're going off, huh? Or at least I'm going off. So, all right. So number one, say it again. Unconditional welcoming. Unconditional welcoming. So being ready to welcome anything Mm -hmm. that's about to come around the corner, even though you don't know what it is. Right. That's beautiful. What do you want to say? And the five tenets just are why. Right, right. Exactly. Because life is intelligent. Right. You want to go through those five again? Oh, my gosh. Okay. Life is intelligent. All feedback is perfect given the sets of circumstances that preceded them. The determination of whether something is good or bad is based on how you choose to see it. Number four, the most supportive form of spotting is non-personalized. And number five, the wisdom source is always available swirl will help you access it Hmm. Hmm. number one unconditional welcoming okay it brings us to number two number two meet (sighs) it's you like what whatever event presentation image, challenge, you know, whatever is coming your way that you might have a reaction to, a relationship to, it's you. 
Mm. It's you. Give yourself oh. permission. Wow, it's you. It's, it's like your awareness. It's almost like a surprise. Mm. Oh, hello. Mm-hmm. It's such a beautiful when you meet. It's like to be revealed. Oh, it's being revealed. It's you onto me. Mm-hmm. And then the greet is like, ah, oh, welcome. Mm-hmm. Welcome. Welcome this this perfect event. Welcome this perfect presentation. You know, isn't that beautiful to have like that, that unconditional welcoming that you're mm-hmm. prepared to do is that it be anything. Mm-hmm. And then you have number two, which is meet and you're feeling out what it is you are to welcome. Mm-hmm. And then you're specifically welcoming that specific thing. Mm-hmm. So it's no longer just unconditional welcoming. It's like you're mm-hmm. actually welcoming what's showing up. You're greeting it. You're right. being a greeter. You're going, welcome. Oh my gosh. I'm so glad you're right on time. Right. And perfect. Given oh the set of God. circumstances that preceded this. Thank you so much for do, for being so full of integrity mm-hmm. and coming right on time. Not that you had any choice, but mm-hmm. I so appreciate your punctuality and your perfection and mm-hmm. all of that isn't that beautiful okay so yes. where does that take us to that's number three so what's four the interview there we go yes. now this is interesting this is yes. this is starting to turn into quite a deeper dive when we get into number mm-hmm. four doesn't it mm-hmm. so what are the two components of the interview it's listen and respond right so it's like the the um oh the junior and senior polarity having right you know, taking turns and like the senior polarity encouraging and right. and supporting the the organic unpacking right. of of this this version that that is is presenting. And even asking very, very high quality questions. Mm-hmm. You could ask them amazingly high quality questions like, so how can I support you? You know? Mm-hmm. So I'm, okay, I'm listening to you, I'm hearing you. How can mm-hmm. I support you? Why are you here? You know, Mm -hmm. you know, things of that, you can even ask questions as opposed to like, you know, just going to that deeper, deeper understanding of listening, going, Mm -hmm. well, I want to get to know you a little better. So tell me more. I mean, tell me a little bit more. And even, you know, perhaps some spotting, like, you know, you know, you know how, how you've run this in the past and, you know, how's that turned out for you? And, you know, would you like to do it differently? Right. Have you made any connections? Did Mm -hmm. you notice that there is a phenomena that's very consistent, Mm -hmm. works like a law? Have you noticed that when you respond in a certain way Mm -hmm. or with a certain energy that you get a certain result and have you made that connection yet? Have you, Mm -hmm. you know, understood that they're indelibly connected? Yeah. 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 That's wonderful. Yes. So do you want to go a little deeper into the uh, responding portion of it, uh, of the interview? It would be just the organic, what is most honest Mm -hmm. about what is coming up for the version of you that is, that is experiencing this presentation, this, you know, event, you know, whatever is coming. That's beautiful. So what is number five? Number five is the vow. And that just, there's so much breath in the vow because it's like, ah, you know, we've got this, you know, together we've got this and we're going to work in your wiggle room so that there's going to be great breath in this process. So it's like, okay, okay. So, so there's, there's just this readiness that's, Mm. that's created for for the next step Mm. which is the assessing that is actually like accessing the wisdom source right where the the greater storytelling will take place right well exactly begin to formulate exactly Mm -hmm. what that greater story is absolutely so is that when you talk about accessing the wisdom source because we're talking about that mm. in the preparation mm-hmm. so we're still looking for swirl right we're still right. looking for telling the possible greatest story mm-hmm. while you're assessing like, right right why are these things happening right. and it's almost like stepping away from any version of yourself that you've previously recognized Absolutely. and just like wow well this is coming through this this there there must be some some I'm, I'm going to use the word godliness, you That's know, a good word. in it, mm-hmm. you know, this is, this is not me. This is like, okay, I have to look at this. This is, this is a, a newer, a newer story, mm-hmm. you know, I'm thinking of something that, you know, 
blips in and out mm-hmm. around assess and it is about telling the greatest possible story as to why something is showing up and i mm-hmm. think something that i'd love to equate with assess and address is the prayer of saint francis mm. where there is this may i sow that mm-hmm. and i think if you assess really really well bill laney would always say implicit mm-hmm. within the area of manifestation is the area of influence right. within, you know when you get to know a challenge so well you know mm. its call to answer mm-hmm. its specific antidote and we talk about dry mouth water right. exhaustion sleep horny sex you know mm-hmm. listlessness exercise you know mm-hmm. there are things hunger eat right. you know and you get to know so mm-hmm. well the timeliness of the dry mouth and you honor mm-hmm. it at the highest level by drinking the water mm. and that's the assessing and the addressing and so mm-hmm. i think the prayer of saint francis is so important it's like right. where there is fear you know may i and people will say faith or something like that and they're like no pay close attention mm. you know fear mm-hmm. it just means that you're underprepared for the situation mm. you know that you're 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 underprepared i mean truly mm. if somebody pulls a gun out you it's not you should be fearful right because mm-hmm. you might get shot so to just go to faith, like everything's going to be okay. No, you better may not make, say that and make one false move. You mm-hmm. got to be very, very careful, mm-hmm. you know, and fear is not a problem any more than dry mouth is a problem. It's mm-hmm. just a call to answer. And you have to know what the call to answer is for fear. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we drink in the Kool-Aid that fear is an absence of faith. And, you know, that's something that was really big with, you know, Gerald Jampolsky, love is letting go of fear. We're talking about, you know, that it's either fear or love or mm-hmm fear of faith you know and it's like this is dangerous because it's really a form of uh what's the word i want to use condemning fear Mm. it's not sanctifying fear it's seeing fear as a problem Mm. and trying to beat it at all costs Mm -hmm. fear is not a problem any more than dry mouth is a problem it just calls to answer and i love that terminology and Mm. i hope that terminology catches on because the whole thrivaputic movement is going to be based on people being well i'm just this deficient or I've got these calls to answer right. and it's perfect. And this is what fear is letting me know exactly. It's like my x-ray or my pet scan or my cat mm. scan or I'm getting feedback and it's integrous and people are not talking like this. So I hope that helps. I mean, as far right. as... And it adds objectivity to step six. Right, exactly. You know, the assessing so that, you know, and perhaps like connection to the wisdom source will help with the you know, if this, then that, and the specific call to answer. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And so let's get into seven, speaking of specific calls to answer. So what is seven? Seven is address. So it's really, you know, a practical integration of call to answer, to like take it on the road and, you know, perhaps embody the archetype that will best, best address the call to answer that's really beautiful answer the call yeah you really really and i appreciate that it's doing it as the solution you know Mm -hmm. in that archetype in that brain state it's not just Mm -hmm. what strategy are you executing as whatever version of you you happen to be it really is about like you know not ignoring who you are and just focusing on what you feel you need to do that the the being is the answer the archetype mm. is the answer and then the strategies kind of reveal themselves rather mm. than what we do as a culture we focus so much on what strategy needs to be handled and it's like well you mean as you what if you gave it to the person mm. who's organically a bo- boss at this you know and just does amazing at this and you give it to them you're going to tell the boss what the strategy is or is that boss who's amazing at this going to show you how it's done mm. You know, that's why I so love where being the solution is so important about getting into that right brain state, the right Mm -hmm. archetype, the right version of you, you know, the right cortical map for my neurological brethren, Mm -hmm. you know, and that's really nice. So let's re, you know, review those seven again. So one, one is unconditional welcoming Two, two is meet and three is greet four, four is interview five five is vow six is assess and seven is address now all of this that we're doing is sanctification it is which is number three in this in the uh succession seven yes do you want to see, do the succession seven and we can kind of show where <laughs> sanctification is we're not gonna do we'll just say them we'll just say the okay seven. we'll see if we'll see how i can do that oh you'll do it you'll all right we'll see all right so number one it's mindfulness. That's it. Mindfulness. Yes. That's yes. good. Yeah. Number two is ease. Let it be easy. Mm-hmm. And number three? 
Number three is sanctification. And everything that we're talking about is in number three. Mm -hmm. We're helping because this is where people get tripped up is with sanctification. Right. So we had to break it out. Right. We had to unpack it and we had to have, mm -hmm. but this is so important that within sanctification, you have preparation for unconditional welcoming, unconditional welcoming, meet, greet, right? All mm -hmm. of this, right? The interview, the vow, assess and address. Right. And then after we get that, what happens after that? is gratitude yes give yourself permission gratitude. to just organically be grateful for all mm -hmm. the good absolutely what happens after gratitude after gratitude i believe is happiness it is yes i would say so and if you're really happy what you end up doing what's number six kindness kindness service absolutely mm -hmm. and it brings us to the ultimate jumping off point which is mm -hmm. number seven what is the ultimate jumping off point is newness creativity newness creativity absolutely mm. where from a place of of kindness because you're doing for others mm. you come up with amazing new creative solutions mm. to situations that are up until now deficient of those creative mm. ideas so thank you this is a nice little uh you know what a summary i guess or a synopsis of of the succession seven and the sanctification yes. seven that's helping the succession seven see the light of day mm. thank you amala for this you're so welcome i really 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 appreciate this this has been an amazing unpacking and sharing this with you along the way mm. has been uh, you are the genuine article for this work you do know that right you do know that i mean something inside you tells you that you mm. know that you run with this stuff better than anybody else. Mm -hmm. So you are like the market research 101 <laughs> on how this stuff works. Because it, it does work and well, it's practical. It is. It is. And it makes life better. I love you so much. I value your friendship so much. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm trying to think of what I want to say in public here. I mean, my favorite quote is that you are the genuine article for so much that I hold most dear. And I remember when that first came through and it's, you're still it, you're still that person. You are the genuine article for so much that I hold most dear. Mm -hmm. This work is where it is because I have you to serve. Mm -hmm. And I really do want to, and I've chosen to my entire life, wanted to excel for you. And this is what mm -hmm. came, all of this. So thank you for your friendship. Thank you for your trust. I can't, I can't thank you enough. Mm -hmm. Well, I receive that. You're welcome. And thank you for the evolving versions of you that mm. serve so well. Not just me, but growing number of people. Thank you. Till next time. Until next time. Thank you. Thank you.